In this video I want to share with you my little trick for assigning the absolute configuration of a Cairo center. And I call it a little trick because it doesn't actually necessitate the sort of mental manipulation of the molecule that textbooks suggest you do in order to solve these problems. I can hardly picture this in my head, let alone rotate it. This trick is worth spending your time on understanding not just for the ability to name a molecule ORS on the day of an exam, but for me understanding this is is the whole crux of chirality itself. So I need you to either get out your molecular model kits or make your own molecular models with plasticine and matches. So what is this thing that I'm blabbering on about? The thing is that when you have the ingredients of a chiral center, i.e. a tetrahedrocarbon and four different groups. The thing that you need to get is that there are only two possibilities that you can make from this stuff and that these two possibilities are necessarily mirror images of each other. So how are you going to get yourself to believe this? Well, very simply by experimenting by changing the balls. The whole basis of the trick for assigning configurations is to understand the fact that when you exchange any two groups, you get the other version of the molecule, i.e. the other enantiomer. So what you're looking at here are two identical molecules. All the colors are in the same place. And when I switch any two groups, in this case yellow and purple, you find that you get the other version of the molecule, the other enantiomer. So therefore, if I switch any two groups again, in this case yellow and red, I'm going to end up with the molecule I started with, i.e. the two molecules are going to be identical again. So the next thing you've got to learn is how to order the groups. And how we order the groups is simply done by convention. What you do is you look at the first atom of the group that's connected to the chiral centre, i.e. the carbon in the middle of everything. And you go to the periodic table and you see how big it is. And very simply, the bigger that atom is, the more important it is. So hydrogen, being the smallest atom, is always going to be the least important group if it's one of your groups. So what I've done here is I've arbitrarily assigned importance with one being the most important and four being the least important. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the least important group facing away from us. And that's the view we're going to look at the molecule from. You always put the least important group facing away from you. And then very simply you join up the numbers. And in this case, we joined up the numbers in an anti-clockwise fashion. And so the configuration of this molecule we call S. Looking at the other enantiomer now and joining up the numbers. Because this time we joined up the numbers in a clockwise fashion, we call the configuration of the molecule OR. So now moving on to how to assign absolute configurations when the molecule is drawn on paper. So if you're not quite sure how, to, how molecules are represented on paper, then what you need to know is that the coloured in triangle means that that group is pointing at you. That group is coming out of the page and it's pointing at you. And the series of vertical lines means that that group is pointing away from you. It's pointing out behind the page. So hopefully comparing the picture of the molecule with the model of the molecule will help you understand that. 
And the thing is that when the least important group, group number four, is already in the position facing away from you, then it's pretty much happy days. You just join up the numbers and you assign the configuration. The problem arises though when group four is not already in the position facing away from you. So this is where the trick comes in. We're going to use our knowledge that by swapping any two groups, you change the configuration of the molecule. And then what we're going to do is we're going to join up the numbers as usual. We're going to assign a hypothetical configuration and then we're going to cross it out and we're going to assign the other one. So the configuration of this molecule is S and not OR because we change the two groups. So that was my video on assigning the absolute configurations of chiral centres. Don't forget to get into your long term memory by showing your friends and thank you for watching.